Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to divide mixed numbers and whole numbers. We have two examples that we're going to go through together in order to get this down. Now in this video, we have one problem where we have a mixed number divided by a whole number, and then one example where we have a whole number divided by a mixed number. The steps that we're going to use to solve these are at the top of the screen. So let's jump into number one, the mixed number divided by the whole number. So we have eight and two thirds divided by two. The first thing we wanna do is change any mixed numbers or whole numbers to improper fractions. That way we have a numerator and a denominator and we're able to continue on through our steps. So let's start with our mixed number here. We'll start at the bottom and work our way to the top. So we multiply and then add. We do three times eight, which is 24, plus two, which is 26. That's our numerator. We keep our denominator of three the same. So we get 26 over three. So that's our equivalent improper fraction there. Let's bring our division sign down. Now for any whole number, in order to put it in fractional form, all we need to do is put it over one. It's as simple as that. So now we're ready for the next step, which is KSF, keep, switch, and flip. Those are the steps of dividing fractions. So the K, keep, that means we keep our first fraction. So 26 over three, we keep. We switch to the opposite of division, which is multiplication. The F, flip, that means since we switched to um, multiplication, we need to flip the second fraction. So the two is now the denominator and the one is the numerator. So we end up with one half, one over two. Now we're ready to multiply straight across and get our final answer. But before doing so, we can always check to see if we can use cancellation. You can think of cancellation as simplifying the problem before multiplying straight across. You need to look for common factors between our numerators and denominators. So for example, number one, we see that we have a 26 and a two there. So we have a common factor of two between those two numbers. So we can divide 26 by two and two by two. So 26 divided by two is 13 and two divided by two is one. So cancellation actually gives us simpler numbers to work with and then also helps us uh, cut down on simplifying at the end. So we have 13 times one, we're ready to multiply straight across. So 13 times one is 13 and three times one is three. So we end up with 13 over three, which is an improper fraction. That is our answer, but we don't wanna leave it improper. We wanna change it to a mixed number. So we do that by doing our numerator, 13, divided by our denominator, three. So let's write it out to better understand what we're doing here. So 13 divided by three. How many whole groups of three out of 13? Well, four, that gets us to 12. Four times three is 12. Subtract, we get a remainder of one. So four is going to be our whole number portion. We could do four whole groups of three out of that 13 with a remainder of one, so that's our numerator, and we keep our denominator of three the same. So we get four and one third. Always check to see if you can simplify the fractional part, but one third is simplified, so we are done, four and one third. I do wanna show you what answer, um, or I'm sorry, compare our answers if we did not use cancellation to see how that would work out. So let me rewrite, we had 26 over three times one half here. So 26 times one is 26, three times two is six. So we end up with 26 over six. So looking a little different here, but let's see how it ends up once we simplify. So 26 divided by six, how many whole groups of six out of 26? Four, that gets us to 24, right? So four, and we would have a remainder of two and keep our denominator of six the same. So four and two sixths. Now the fractional part there can be simplified because two and six 
have a common factor, a greatest common factor of two. So let's divide each by two and see what we get. We keep our whole number of four the same. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. So we end up with the same answer, four and one third. So in the case of cancellation, we simplified before multiplying straight across. And when we didn't use cancellation, we had more simplifying at the end. So you can see the difference there. Two paths, but we ended up with the same correct answer um, no matter which way we worked it out there. So on to number two, where we have seven divided by three and three fifths. So again, first thing we need to do is change any mixed numbers or whole numbers to improper fractions. Seven is a whole number, so we can just put it over one. Divide it by three and three fifths. We start at the bottom, work our way up. We multiply, oh, let's make that an arrow. We multiply and then add. So five times three is 15 plus three is 18. Keep our denominator of five the same. So now we're ready for the dividing fraction steps. Keep, switch, flip. So always keep your first fraction, switch to multiplication, and then we flip. So we have five eighteenths. Now we're ready to multiply straight across, but we can look for cancellation. In the case of number two, the only common factor between our numerators and denominators is one, so we can't use cancellation. So we go right to multiplying straight across. Seven times five is 35. One times 18 is 18. So our answer is 35 over 18, but we do not want to leave it improper. Let's change it to a mixed number. So we need to do 35 divided by 18. How many whole groups of 18? Well, 18 times two is 36. So we don't quite have enough for two. It's going to be one whole group of 18. And that's going to give us a remainder of 17. Keep our denominator of 18 the same. The only common factor between 17 and 18 is one, so that is in simplest form, and we are done. Our final answer is one and 17 over 18. So there you have it. There's how you divide mixed numbers and whole numbers. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.